No, 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 no. I say no. Oh, I said no. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, Monique, I am so glad you joined me. Today we are talking about the no game. And this is in our Relationship tool series. So three principles for our work together. The first one is that the grass is greener elsewhere. No, the grass is greener where you water it. I agree. The second principle is that secure attachment is created, is practiced. And the third principle is playfulness is the key to satisfying relationships. Are you sure? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so the no game is very simple. Basically, you keep saying no to all your partner is offering. So we're going to talk about expected benefits, how to play the game. We're going to do a few role plays and we'll have a typical Q&A. So expected benefit number one is that many of us haven't learned how to set boundaries. So practicing saying no can be a great step toward that. Expected benefit number two is that we often have too many no's and we end up sort of vilifying our partner and thinking that they are the problem and they're the reason for our troubles. And so the no game is an excellent way of staying in relationship through the inevitable like micro and macro rejections um, that happen in couples. One of the benefits of the no game is that it can enable us to easily go beyond all the resentment of these too many no's that we have in some couples. And then we can access and better understand our partner's point of view, our partner's experience. And the no game can help us break the request versus demand cycle so that we don't end up in a power struggle. Can you explain the difference? Yes, it's a request if you're allowed to say no and there won't be any punishment, withholding of affection or me, you know, doing other ways that tell you that there actually was only one answer available to you. It's a demand if the punishment or other manipulation thing comes after your no. I did recently a video on nice guys and of course why you don't want to be one. In the video, I was talking about uh, one of the solutions, which is to learn to say, I want to one's partner. Could the game help? Absolutely, because playfully practicing rejection frees us from it. Any more benefit because of playfulness? Absolutely. The wonderful thing about the no game is it brings playfulness into our relationship, which takes us from frustration to playful reconnection. The game is deceptively simple and it can offer great breakthroughs, but it can also backfire. So here are a couple of preliminaries we recommend before we play the game. Your relationship must be ready to play the game and you must ensure that your partner is fully available to play. Second preliminary is you want to set the game well. So what game you want to play, how long for, if any variations, when and how you want to debrief, how you want to close the game, and of course, appreciation and celebration. The basic no game, you can play this game one way, or you may switch after the timer ends. So you say something, your partner says no, and you repeat either until the timer ends or the two of you burst into laughter. Then you close the game, and of course, we recommend celebrating and appreciating each other. The no and variation. This is a practice in staying in a relationship as your partner keeps repeating no. You offer something to your partner, they say no, and you keep repeating until the timer ends or the two of you laugh, which is often the case. And then you debrief and you close with celebration and appreciation of each other. And a very playful variation, this spontaneous no game. 
So outside of any play or practice, you spontaneously say no to your partner. And hopefully they get your playfulness and then you can engage in a different dance with each other. And of course, always celebration of appreciation of each other. Valdo, will you please do the dishes after lunch today? No. <laughs> will you do the dishes after lunch today? No. Valdo, will you please <laughs> do the dishes after lunch today? No. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Monique, it feels good to say no because I somehow live in constant fear that you're going to come back home and I have not done the dishes because it doesn't flow with me. And it was really good to say no to you. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. No, thank you. Fun to play the game with you. Yeah, and so let's find a solution so that uh, we can both um, have your knees met, which is, you know, a clean kitchen, and okay. me also, uh, you know, live in, you know, stress-free. Sure. Okay. Monique, I would love you to come with me to visit my mother today. <laughs> no, and I would be open to going out to lunch. Monique, um, I would love you to come to visit my mother with me. No, and uh, I would be open to visiting her another time. Monique, it is today I would love you and I to go to visit my mother. No, and I would be willing to go if you stayed connected with me as your partner while we were there. Wow. So I'm hearing that when I'm in the presence of my mother, I may lose connection with you. Is that correct? That is correct. And as I'm feeling into it, I realize I'm also actually really blaming your mother a lot for this. <laughs> wow, that sounds like a breakthrough in our relationship. <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> I'm glad we played the game. Yeah, I'm so glad I married you. <laughs> Valdo, I'd really like to have sex with you tonight. No, and I... How about we watch a movie together? Valdo, I'd really like to have sex with you tonight. No, and how about um, I give you a massage? Valdo, I'd really like to have sex with you tonight. No, and you know, I'm reading a really good book and I would love to keep reading it. Baldo, I'd really love to have sex with you tonight. No, my love, and um, I'd prefer to sleep tonight. Valdo, I'd really love to have sex with you tonight. No, and, um, you know, I'm running out of answers. <laughs> 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 so, um, <laughs> What does he say about our sex life? Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, what you hear all the time about low libido is a women's issue, but, you know, it goes both ways, doesn't it, sweetheart? Definitely in our relationship, yeah. Mm -hmm. Sounds like it would be good that we find solutions so that we can have a more satisfying sex life for you. Yeah, let's start with that massage choice. I appreciate okay. you playing the no game with me. Sounds good. Phew, Monique, the kids are finally asleep. No. Sounds like an invitation to chase you. <laughs> <laughs> so first question, Monique, I love it. Could we do this playfully? Absolutely. Being playful as a couple can be so much better than the over-processing that we sometimes do in justifying our behaviors or therapy. So the idea here is play to break patterns. So what if I set a timer for five minutes and after 90 seconds, there is no more juice? Yeah, we actually recommend that you start with a short block of time and keep going if there's lots of juice and just cut it early if, you've, if you're finding it's not bringing that lovely, juicy energy. My partner doesn't find this game funny. 
That is a good point. Sometimes there is a lot of resentment in a couple that has accumulated over time from all these rejections that we first have to unearth and process. So we recommend that you find a good counselor or a good therapist first to help you break that cycle. My partner's default is already no. Shall I attempt inviting them to play the game? You know, it can be really hard to recognize your own and your partner's patterns. And so when you're stuck in a pattern like that, we recommend that you get a coach or a therapist to help you out. Do not attempt this by yourself. No, 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 no. <laughs> Every time I suggest couples coaching or counseling to my partner, they say no. This is a very classic challenge, uh, especially with men. Men typically uh, dread the uh, pain, frustration of couples counseling. And so uh, actually this is why I created Happy Couples Play Together, so that couples learn to play together instead of somehow fear the demand of having to talk, uh, you know, about stuff and talk and talk and talk again. This next question is really interesting. Many of my friends say that my partner has very strong narcissistic tendencies. Would it be good that I play the game with them? You know, I want to learn to say no. Yeah, so this is why I put in that preliminary screening. Like, is your relationship ready for this game? And when you're perceiving, your friends are perceiving those narcissistic tendencies, it sounds like you might have a partner who's more interested in being right and putting you down than learning and growing together. So this is where we'd say, this relationship's probably not ready for this game. My typical answer is already no. I, and I, I wish I said yes more often, but my partner has erectile dysfunction and sex is typically more frustrating for me than rewarding. So should I use this game? I'm really glad you asked. And so first is we do not teach uh, sexual techniques and there are many available. However, we teach how to find solution as a team, as partners. I believe that the game can be really helpful to begin airing frustrations that you have with your partner. And it can also help uh, release, you know, performance anxiety that is often present with ED as men age. I tried this game as you recommended with my wife, but she burst into tears when I was expecting her to laugh at our patterns. Yeah, so she likely needs reconnection and restoration before you go into a game like this. And so this is where you're invited, regardless of your gender, to step into that masculine energy that just offers a hug and holds her and is with her as she goes through her emotions. And, you know, if she's not used to you doing that, she may push you away at first. Again, without expectations, the invitation is to lean in again, have that gentle, commanding presence of a hug or holding her hand so that she can start to feel safe and connection before you step into a game. I wish I had the opportunity to say no, but my partner never even offers. You know, I'm really glad you asked that question because there is a belief that low libido is just a woman's problem, but we see as many men having low libido as women do. You are not alone. I want to reassure you first. <laughs> I would invite you and your partner to play a variation that we call, I would say no if. Okay, so are you saying that I'd say like, Valdo, I would say no if you asked me to have sex on the dining room table right now. Or I would say no if you asked to have sex tying me up. Exactly. And so what this does is it makes the situation playful. And it also creates the space so both of you can talk about your needs and how you want to mutually satisfy each other. Awesome. Without all the pressure. Right. That makes sense. If this video inspired you to bring more playfulness in your relationship, I invite you to hit the like button below and subscribe so you can be notified when I publish new juicy content. And please share with all you believe would benefit. I look forward to seeing you very soon.